Hi, I'm Wesley Ferreira, clarinet professor at Colorado State University. And today, I'm going to discuss how to prepare this year's Colorado All-State Band and Orchestra Audition. In this video, Rose's Etude Number 15 will be our focus. When preparing for an audition, it's important to try and determine what the particular musical selection chosen is meant to highlight. Rose's Etude Number 15 is marked Adagio with an added con espresión indication in the first measure. These markings suggest that the etude is to be played slowly and with expression. Keep this in mind and practice with these characteristics during your entire preparation process. The Allstate audition requirement is to perform the first 24 measures of this etude at quarter note equals 60. It's clear then that this etude, compared to the other, is meant to highlight more of your tone, musicality, and ability to subdivide. Let's go over some important and basic concepts to keep in mind when preparing this etude. Let's talk about subdividing. For many, playing this etude evenly may be a possible first obstacle. Make sure to keep the steady eighth note subdivision going from the outset. This will allow you to place the eighth notes in their accurate rhythmic position and prevent you from rushing throughout the rest of the etude. Use a metronome to keep you honest. While breathing and musicality will allow for stretching the pulse, the eighth note subdivision should be kept relatively even. Feeling an eighth note subdivision will also help you during the playing of the sixteenth note passages. Be sure to differentiate between the rhythms in measure two, the double dotted eighth note, and measure four, the single dotted eighth note. Playing these details accurately will make a big difference in your audition. Those two measures contain another possible pitfall. You, it might be challenging for some of you to play between the C-sharp and the B-natural smoothly and without a blip between them. Practice going back and forth between these two notes slowly so that you can feel confident in your ability to use air to play this connection smoothly. The cadenza in the middle of this excerpt is truly important. Spend a lot of time playing it slowly. Make sure to play every note accurately. Don't add notes and don't leave out notes when playing the first two 32 note runs. It's not so important that you play this quickly as it is to play it accurately and musically. I'm going to suggest a few good fingerings to use in these two runs that will allow you to avoid sliding and flipping between keys so you can play these runs smoothly. Following the low F sharp for mono note in measure 12 at the beginning of the cadenza, play the low E sharp with your right finger. This will allow you to play the F sharp with your left finger and then the G sharp with your right finger. The next note is an A sharp, a fingering that we usually play as a B flat. Moving on to the B natural, I would recommend playing it with the forked fingering. Play all of the B naturals in this run in this forked position as well. This will avoid you having to flip between the A sharp and the B natural. Finally, at the end of this first run, you have to play between an E sharp and an F sharp. Here, I would suggest that you avoid flipping too by playing the side F sharp. From E sharp, a fingering that we commonly play as F natural, going to the side F sharp, we simply have to depress the two bottom side keys. Use this fingering to avoid flipping between these two notes whenever you need to play smoothly in your music you'll see that there is an opportunity to use this combination at the start of the second 32 note run of the cadenza. Continuing with alternate fingerings, you can avoid flipping between the clarion register E sharp and the F sharp at the end of the second run by playing the F sharp in the fork position as well. You will have to flip between the E sharp and the F sharp eventually following these runs when the three note patterns appear. You need to play the F sharp with the middle finger in this case, so that you can avoid sliding between the F sharp and the D natural. Okay, this is a lot of information to take in, so I'm going to project the cadenza on the screen with all of my suggested fingerings. Go ahead and pause the video if you'd like to copy them into your part. As a performer, and perhaps with the guidance of your teacher, you should decide on how you will perform the cadenza. There are many good musical options, but the key is that what you decide should make musical sense, and it should be played with great tone and technique, appropriate to your level. This brings me to a topic of playing this etude in character. 
use continuous air support and play with your very best tone to achieve a lyrical characteristic. I always tell my students that playing with air support means that you should be focusing on air continually moving out of you, moving down the length of the tube, the clarinet, and hearing the tone come out of your bell. Achieving a lyrical character means that your articulation should be played legato. Your breaths need to be silent. And here's a tip. Pay attention to how the ends of your notes sound. We too often focus on the beginning and middle of notes, and then we mentally move on to the beginning of the next note without really listening to the ends of the previous notes. Connect all notes under the written slur with air and focus on the phrasing. If you're playing from the Carl Fisher revised edition of this etude, you'll notice an added pietoso character indication added next to the word adagio. Pietoso is an Italian term indicating that you should perform the piece compassionately. Although you were asked to perform this etude at around quarter equals 60 for your all-state audition, you may find that playing it a bit slower, say quarter equals 52, as many clarinets do, will help you to achieve this character. You'll see that there are no dynamic markings listed in this etude other than the initial piano, but this doesn't mean that you cannot play at other dynamic markings. Playing musically often means that we can allow the music to inform our musical interpretation. There are definitely phrases in this etude where, for me, playing con expression dictates that I will raise my dynamic level. You'll hear that in my performance. Of course, you should follow any dynamic and stylistic indications that are present in this etude. The crescendi, decrescendi, ritardando markings, and accent markings. Have fun with your interpretation and make sure that your practicing habits allow you to show off your great tone and lyrical playing. It's been a pleasure sharing my thoughts on this etude. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments section below, or you can contact me via email. Also, please feel free to email sound or video files if you'd like me to review them and offer suggestions. I hope to see many of you at the Allstate Band and Orchestra weekends this year, and even at the various honor bands in our state that use this same etude. Good luck with your auditions.